أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سبحانك سبحانك اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي أمسينا وأمس الملك لله والحمد لله لا شريك له لا إله إلا هو وإليه المصير أمسينا على فطرة الإسلام وكلمة الإخلاص وعلى دين نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى ملة أبينا إبراهيم حنيفا وما كان من المشركين اللهم إني أمسيت منك في نعمة وعافية وستر فأتم علي نعمتك وعافيتك وسترك في الدنيا والآخرة اللهم ما أمسى بي من نعمة أو بأحد من خلقك فمنك وحدك لا شريك لك فلك الحمد ولك الشكر يا رب لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك رضينا بالله ربا وبالإسلام دينا وبمحمد صلى الله عليه وسلم نبيا ورسولا ثم أما بعد my dear respected brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And welcome back to the Friday night halaqah or lecture. And uh, tonight, insha'Allah, we're going to talk about uh, the fiqh of or fasting of Ramadan. Since we are coming uh, closer to the month of Ramadan, we're going to talk about the fasting of the month of Ramadan, but through the verses in Surah Al-Baqarah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about Ramadan. So the verses in Surah Al-Baqarah starting from verse 183, 183, where it started with Surah, uh, with the talking about the Siyam. In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, <coughs> أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون All believers fasting is prescribed for you as it was for those before you so perhaps you will become mindful of Allah, reach the level of a taqwa. And from this verse, <coughs> we understand that number one is that fasting is an obligation, kutiba, prescribed. And these terms like kutiba and furida mean the obligation. It was prescribed uh, uh, for you as it was it was prescribed for those before you and we understand that fasting is not an exclusivity for the ummah of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam but also it was part of the teachings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the to the nations before this nation before the nation of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam it was not in the same way, you know, necessarily fasting the month of Ramadan, but the concept of fasting was always part of the teachings and the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also in this verse, we understand the highest objective of fasting, which is what? تحقيق التقوى, to achieve righteousness, which means that, uh, that fasting makes our better Muslims more decent human beings. And this is what we are supposed to achieve by observing this uh, obligation as uh, of fasting. And then in the following verse, 184, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps talking about some of the rules and regulations, some of the fiqh issues related to fasting. He said, فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٌ وَعَلَى الَّذِينَ يُطِيقُونَهُ فِدِيَةٌ طَعَامُ مِسْكِينٌ 
فَمَن تَطَوَّعَ خَيْرًا فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَّهُ وَأَن تَصُومُوا خَيْرٌ لَّكُمْ إِن كُنتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ Fast a prescribed numbers of days or number of days. Ayyaman ma'adudat. And the one who decided which days we are supposed to fast is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not up to any human being to decide. So ayyaman ma'adudat means that the numbers are prescribed. And but whoever of you is ill, sick, or on a journey, either sick, then this person has to take medication during the daytime, or in a journey traveling, then let them fast an equal number of days after Ramadan. And this is what we call Al-Qadha, and we are going to explain Al-Qadha. For those who can only fast with extreme difficulty, they can fast, but with extreme difficulty, compensation can be made by feeding a needy person for every day not fasted. And this is what we call what? al fidya This is what we call al fidya For the person who cannot fast any time because of a permanent sickness, because of the age, because of whatever you know, circumstances, that they cannot fast any day of the year, they break their fast and they have to what? To, <coughs> excuse me, to feed a needy person. And this is what we call al fidya But whoever volunteers to give more, it is better for them. Here the scholars, they said, volunteers to do their best to fast. Okay? Or volunteer to give more than what is needed for al fidya Instead of giving one meal per day, that the day that was, was broken or was missed, they, they give more than one meal. They give more than the fidya. That is an obligation. Okay? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is encouraging people who have to pay fidya to pay extra, to do more than what they are supposed to do. And to fast is better for you. If only you, you knew. وَأَن تَصُومُوا خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ Which means that whenever you have, you are in a, in a, in a situation where you have the permission, a rukhsa, to break your fast and to pay al fidya, do so. But if you do that extra effort and you fast, it's better for you. And we know through many ahadith, there, I mean, some scholars, they brought almost like more than a dozen of a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, uh, when he was traveling, showing that he uh, uh, gave the permission to his companions, you know, for those who would like to fast, you know, they have the right to fast. For those who would like to break their fast, they can break their fast. Uh, but here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, وَأَن تَصُومُوا خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ Which means if you, if you do that extra effort and you fast, it's better for you. The following verse, 185. شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنُ هُدًى لِلنَّاسِ هُدًى لِلنَّاسِ وَبَيِّنَاتٍ مِّنَ الْهُدَى وَالْفُرْقَانِ فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَصُمْهِ وَمَنْ كَانَ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِّنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرَ وَلِتُكْمِلُوا الْعِدَّةَ وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ Ramadan is the month in which the Quran was revealed as a guide for humanity with clear proofs of guidance and the decisive authority. Again here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us another reason to be happy and to celebrate Ramadan, not just because of the fasting in Ramadan, 
but also because Ramadan is the, the time, the month when Al Quran was revealed. So Ramadan is known to be Shahru Siyam, the month of fasting, and also Shahru Al Quran, the month of Al Quran. Of course, we have to have this, you know, uh, connection with Al Quran all the time, all the days. But in Ramadan, we increase that. In Ramadan, we try to do more than any other day. And the fact that we come uh, every night to attend Salat al-Taraweeh, and then during the last 10 nights, Salat al-Tahajjud, when we go to our home after Salat al-Taraweeh, you know, we try also to pray some rak'at with our family, and, and also the daily connection with the Qur'an, if uh, beside Ramadan, we, we try our best every day, if we don't do it every day, every other day, as much as we can. In Ramadan, we make sure that our time with the Qur'an is on a daily basis. And we give a significant time to Al-Qur'an. Why? Because Ramadan is the month of Al-Qur'an. Ramadan is the month when the Prophet Sallallahu used to have Jibreel coming to him every single night to study with him Al-Qur'an, يدارسه Al-Qur'an, to study with him Al-Qur'an. Imagine Jibreel coming down to the Prophet Sallallahu every night in Ramadan and going through the verses of the Qur'an and teaching him and all that stuff. So this is really what we should, you know, consider in Ramadan to strengthen our connection with Al-Qur'an. And then Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says, <clears throat> so whoever is present this month, let them fast. فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَصُمْ The word shahida has two meanings. The first one, which means to be present. The opposite of غَائِب. غَائِب absent. And absent here means traveling. فَمَنْ شَهِدَ Whoever is in his home or her home, not traveling, they have to fast. The second meaning of shahida witnessed the, the beginning of Ramadan, the moon, the crescent, Hilal Ramadan. So whoever cited Ramadan and whoever is not traveling and staying home, then fasting becomes an obligation upon them. فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَصُمْهِ فِعْلْ أَمْرِ It's an order, it's a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But whoever is ill or in a, on a journey, then let them fast an equal number of days after Ramadan, as it was mentioned in the verse, in the, in the, verse, uh, uh, the previous verse. Allah intends ease for you, not hardship. And this is a rule with all the ibadat of Islam. Al-ibadat or at-takalif, the obligations, the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mabniyatun ala taysir is based on the easiness to make it easy for people, not to overwhelm people. That's why in each ibadah, each act of worship, there is what we call al-azimah, which means the original ruling that we are supposed to perform that al-ibadah based on that original ruling. And there is a rukhsah the permission, meaning uh, when it comes to al-wudu, to purify ourselves physically before salah. We are supposed to make wudu, right? And al-wudu, in the wudu, we use what? We use the water. If there is an excuse, a valid excuse, that we cannot use that water, because we don't have water, we don't have enough water, we have water but it's not pure, or there is a risk of getting sick or uh, extending the sickness if we use water. In this case, Al-Islam has given us the alternative, al rukhsah to move from Al-Azimah to al rukhsah by using what? Al-Tayammum, right? In the Salah, we are supposed to stand, okay? We are supposed to stand to perform a Salah. But if somebody cannot stand, because of health, medical, you know, reason. Can they say that since I cannot stand that I'm, I'm not going to pray? No. They can sit on a chair. They can sit on the ground. Somebody laying down on, on the, you know, uh, 
hospital bed or something like this, or at home, sick. He cannot even, you know, sit. He has to be always laying down. Can he say that, you know, since I cannot stand, since I cannot sit on a chair, then I don't have to pray? No, they have to pray no matter what, at any, under any circumstances. So moving from al-azima to al-rukhsa, the same thing here for siyam. If somebody for whatever reason, sickness, traveling, a pregnant woman, a nursing woman, an old man who cannot, you know, sustain fasting, then always there is what? An alternative. They have the permission to break that fast and then later on, if they can fast after Ramadan, make up the days that they have missed, they have to do so any time before the next Ramadan. If they can't, then they have to pay what? To pay al-fidya, which means moving again from al-azima to al-rukhsa. For every act of worship, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us an alternative to move on to do if we cannot do it the way we are supposed to do it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, uh, uh, Allah intends is for you not hardship, so that you may come so that you may complete the prescribed period of uh, the prescribed period, which means the whole month of Ramadan, and proclaim the greatness of Allah for guiding you. And this is the celebration of Al Eid. When do we make takbir? On the day of Eid. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it easy for us to complete the prescribed period of fasting so that we may make takbir and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guiding us. And perhaps you will be grateful. So these are the main, there are also uh, verse 187. Uh, that also talks about uh, some rulings that we will talk about them uh, separately. So, the month of Ramadan. When we talk about uh, Ramadan, <coughs> uh, this month, the ninth month of the lunar calendar is called Ramadan. And th this name of this month was not given by uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the Prophet sallam, or the Muslims. The, the, the name of this month was given way before Islam by the Arabs. So the Arabs wanted to give the names to the months of the lunar calendar, of the lunar calendar. And the time when they named all these months, the ninth month fell in summer and you know what kind of heat uh, uh, you know in summer in Arabia so they gave the name of Ramadan to the ninth month because it was extremely hot and the name or the word Ramadan in the Arabic language means the the hot sand the hot sand you know Th that's why in Arabic also there is uh, another word Ramda or Ramad, which means also the hot sand. This is the, the original uh, uh, or the origin of the name of Ramadan. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the verse, Kutiba alaykum as siyam. We call it siyam or another word, sawm. And they are synonyms, as siyam or sawm, which means uh, 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 fasting. So, but what is the, what is the, 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 the meaning of the word sawm or siyam? Linguistically, in the Arabic language, it means to refrain from doing something. To stop from doing something or saying something. And this is uh, uh, the meaning when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked to us in the Quran about the story of Maryam, alayhi salatu was salam, when, when she uh, delivered the baby and she she didn't know what to tell people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told her that whenever you see somebody, قُولِ إِنِّي نَذَرْتُ لِلرَّحْمَانِ sawma. So she mentioned the word sawm. Here sawm doesn't mean refrain from food and water, but refrain from speaking. Don't speak to anyone. 
الصوم من الكلام اوكي الصوم من الكلام تو ريفرين فروم سبيتش فروم سبيكينج جوريستيكلي في الشريعه فاستينج مينز تو ريفرين فروم فود ليت مي سي ات ان عربي كان ترانسليت ان انجلش الصوم هو الامساك عن جميع المفطرات من طلوع الفجر الى غروب الشمس بنيه The translation of this uh, uh, definition is to refrain from food, water, and intimate relationship. All of them are under what? Al-Muftirat. Al-Muftirat is a plural of Al-Muftir, and Al-Muftir is anything that we do that will break our fast. Okay? To refrain from all Al-Muftirat from Fajr, dawn, early in the morning, until sunset al ghurub and sunset here means when the sun disappears behind the horizon with the intention of ibadah here in this definition each word has an importance if we remove any word from this definition at the ta'rif then we're not going to understand what a siyam or a saw means so number one It is to refrain from food, water, and any intimate relationship. So nothing can go through our throat. If we drink anything or we eat anything, it will break our fast. From dawn, al-fajr, until sunset. And we have to be careful. There are some people, I heard some people saying from sunrise to sunset. If we wait until sunrise, To start fasting, our day is gone, right? So we have to be careful. From Fajr, before even the, uh, uh, the light start showing in the, in the eastern horizon, until sunset. And at sunset, we have to break the fast. And this imsak has to be with niyyah, with the intention. And the niyyah here is very important. as it is important in all the acts of worship, all the ibadat. If you go and read about the fara'id of al-ibadat, the obligatory acts of al-ibadat, whether it is uh, al-wudu or al-tayammum or al-ghusl, al-salat, al-umr, every ibadah we do, a niyya is part of it. And this is based on the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ A niyya has to be part of it. And the niyya, Uh, 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 in fasting of the month, here we are talking about Ramadan, basically. We're not talking about any type, other type of fasting like Ashura and uh, uh, Mondays and Thursdays and, 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 and uh, Arafah. And we're focusing on the fasting of Ramadan, the month of Ramadan. And niyya distinguishes between al-ibadah and al-adah. Al-ibadah is the worship. Al-adah is any social practice. Okay? So if I fast a day, Without having the niyyah of al-ibadah. I fast it because I want to lose weight. Uh, I fast because uh, it's healthy. Whatever. I mean, people also fast for a political reason, like striking, right? This is not considered as ibadah. Al-ibadah, only when I have the niyyah that I am doing this act of worship, I am fasting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as ibadah. Now, fasting has to be done before Al-Fajr. Let's say, for example, now it's night time, and we know that tomorrow is the first day of Ramadan. This is the time we're supposed to do an niyyah. Any time after sunset of the day before Ramadan, after sunset and before Fajr of the, the first day of Ramadan. How do we do that niyyah? An niyyah is not something verbal. You cannot just say, Ya Allah, uh, you know tomorrow is the first day of Ramadan, so I'm just telling you that I'm going to fast. We don't do this. Okay? So how we can make this niyyah? Number one, if you know within you, you know, in your mind and heart, that tomorrow is the first uh, day of Ramadan, this is niyyah. If you call or text or tell somebody, that uh, Ramadan Mubarak, inshallah, tomorrow will be fasting. This is niyyah. 
if you uh, make dua, Ya Allah, you know, uh, help me to reach the first day of Ramadan tomorrow. This is niyyah. If you eat suhoor before Fajr, this is niyyah. So all these will be considered as what? As niyyah. The only thing that is not niyyah is you don't do anything, you are not aware, you, you, it's like a surprise. You know, after Fajr, sometime after Fajr, somebody tells you, okay, today is the first day of Ramadan. And you're like, what? I didn't know this, like surprising. But anything else that, that we, the, a feeling, uh, saying, texting, receiving a text, okay, receiving a message from a friend or a family member that tomorrow is the first day of Ramadan, this is considered niyyah. The other question is, do we have to renew the niyyah every night in Ramadan or just one is enough? Again, this is a debatable issue among scholars. There are some scholars who said that, no, we have to have niyyah every night in Ramadan before the fajr of every day, you have to make the niyyah. There are other scholars, they said no, one niyyah before the first day of Ramadan is enough to carry, to be carried all the way till the last day of Ramadan, okay? But if somebody interrupts his or her fast by breaking a day because he got sick, because he traveled, because her monthly period started or something like this, right? For whatever days, one or more, then whenever we resume fasting, we have to have a new niyyah. You see? If we interrupt our fasting, and then we resume fasting, we have to have a niyyah. Now, some uh, 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 terms that we use in Ramadan, at tarawih what means a tarawih? In the Arabic language, tarawih from tarwiha, which means to have rest. Because the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, when they, when they uh, used to uh, pray tarawih, they used to pray مثلاً, two or four rak'ah and then take a long break. Uh, even some of them go renew their wudu or go eat something or drink water and then come back and then resume that. So that's why it's called tarawih. They, they used to have rest between the, the, uh, the, the, the prayers. Uh, and as, as, as an act of worship, at tarawih is the night prayer that we do in Ramadan after Isha. Okay, the night prayer that we do in Ramadan after Isha. And tarawih is something exclusively for Ramadan. Uh, beside Ramadan, if we pray, let's say we get together as a group, we want to make Qiyam al-Layl together after Salat al-Isha, we want to pray, uh, we can do that. We cannot call it tarawih. Tarawih is only for Ramadan. Other than Ramadan, we call it Qiyam al-Layl. And Qiyam al-Layl, it's any extra prayers that we do any time at night from Isha until Fajr. It's called Tarawih. The word Tahajjud. Tahajjud also is a night prayer, a prayer, an extra prayer that is performed at night, but usually it's performed in the last part of the night. Usually we don't call the, f the extra prayer that we do right after Isha, we don't call it Tahajjud. We call it Tarawih, okay? And the last part of the night, when we wake up and pray, it's called Tahajjud. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded His Prophet sallallahu to do. وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَتَهَجَّدْ بِهِ نَافِلَةً لك. At night, stand up, at the last part of the night, stand up, and make tahajjud, extra prayers. So this is, so both tarawih and tahajjud are night prayers, but usually uh, uh, tarawih uh, uh, is performed at the beginning of the night and tahajjud at the end of the night. Al-qadha, we just talked about it. What means al-qadha? When you hear in Ramadan, somebody saying, uh, I have to make qadha, okay? Al-qadha is to make up the missed days in Ramadan. Whatever days are missed, then we make al-qadha. And al-qadha here is uh, to, to, to make up the same amount of days. When, when Ramadan is, or the day is, is broken, or the fast is broken, for a valid reason. For a valid, Islamically valid reason. 
I, 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 I was fasting and then I got sick. I broke that day because I, I, uh, I got sick. I had to take medication for one day or two or three or whatever. Al-Qadha means that after that Ramadan, any time between that Ramadan and Ramadan, the next one, I make up those days day by day. Should I make them up in a row? No, it's not necessary. Can I combine between Qadha and fasting on a Thursday or a Monday? Yes. We will, we will be making Al-Qadha, you know, making up that day, but in the same time, getting the Ajr, the Hasanat of what? Of the Sunnah, fasting a Monday or Thursday. It is permissible to do this. Now, Al-Kaffara. Sometimes you hear about the word Al-Kaffara. Somebody has to do Al-Kaffara. Al-Kaffara is a penalty for fast, fast missed uh, days that are missed unnecessarily without any valid reason. Without any valid, you know, somebody just, just uh, uh, violated the sanctity of Ramadan violated the sanctity of Ramadan. There was no valid reason and that person broke Ramadan. And Al-Kaffara here, as it was mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu either freeing a slave, which is not applicable nowadays, or number two, fast two months in a row, two months in a row, or number three, if the person cannot do this, feeding of 60 people, okay, six zero, 60 people. These are the three uh, uh, stages or levels of Al-Kaffara. And this is based on the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ when this man came to him and he told him, Ya Rasulullah, you know, I did such and such. And so he told him, Alayka Al-Kaffara. And he told him, go and free a slave. He told him, Ya Rasulullah, I cannot do this. I don't have the financial ability to do this. He told him, then go fast two months in a row, 60 days. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I cannot do this. My health doesn't allow me to do this. And then he told him, then go and feed 60 people. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I am a poor person. I cannot do that. Then the Prophet Sallallahu got you know, urjun min tamr It's like, like uh, you know, a branch of dates. And he told him, take this and go feed poor people in Al-Madinah. He told him, Ya Rasulullah, between the two mountains, because Al-Madinah was an oasis between two mountains, Uhud from one side, another mountain from the other side. He told him, Ya Rasulullah, between these two mountains, there is no one who deserves this sadaqah than me. I'm the poorest one in the Medina. So the Prophet smiled and then gave him that branch of dates and he told him, go feed your family. Go feed your family. So this is the hadith where, from where we get the uh, 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 rules about al-kaffara. And al-kaffara is the, 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 the penalty for uh, the one who uh, uh, does any intimate relationship during the month of Ramadan. This is according to Al-Jumhur, the vast majority of the scholars. Al-Malikiyah, they add another reason for Al-Kaffara, which is the one who eats or drinks in Ramadan without any valid reason. The one who breaks his fast with no reason. The other scholars, the other madahib, they say, this person, I mean, it's enough for this person, the sin that he committed. By breaking his fast with no valid reason, this is a major sin. This is a, a, a big violation to the sanctity and the holiness of Ramadan. But he has to make that day only, Al-Qadha. Al-Malikiyah, they say no. He has to make Al-Qadha one day, and then Al-Kaffara, 60 days in a row. So this is... Uh, uh, where al-kaffara is applicable. Now the word al-fidya. We hear about al-fidya, and you, you hear us announcing that al-fidya is $15 per day. Al-fidya is the donation to give, or the food, the meal to give, 
to the needy people for fast missed in Ramadan out of necessity for valid reason. As I, we have mentioned, for example, a, a, a pregnant woman, uh, a nursing woman who could not fast the entire month of Ramadan, uh, a permanent sickness like somebody who has uh, diabetes, for example, they cannot fast. Okay, these people they have to pay what? Al fidya after Ramadan. And al fidya again is to provide a meal to a poor person for each day, not for the three meals, yeah, like three times a day. No, one meal a day. If you don't know anyone, I mean, you, you, you don't know to whom you should pay or, you know, then you can give it a monetary donation. And last year and this year, it's about $15 per day, per person, okay? Now, if you tell me that, Wallahi, I cannot afford to pay $15 each day, then, Fattakullaha mastata'atu. Pay as much as you can. Even if you can pay $5 a day, $4, do it. Allah knows your ability, so do as much as you can. This is what we call al fidya. Al iftar, all of us we know what is al iftar, right? It's breaking the fast at Maghrib. And we should do it immediately after hearing the adhan. If we are in the masjid or we are in a place where there is adhan available, we can hear it from far away. Once we hear the adhan, we should not wait. We should not wait until the adhan is. No. During the adhan, we have to break our fast. If you ask me, how about al muadhin? Should he make adhan and then break his fast? No. Al muadhin is supposed to like drink some water or eat a date and then he makes and then he makes the adhan. Okay? Of course he does it because he believes that the time of Maghrib start. So he takes a few seconds to drink some water, to break his fast, and then making the adhan. We are not supposed to delay the adhan. Uh, uh, until al muadhin is done, or uh, we are not supposed to delay iftar until adhan is done. Okay? And uh, this is uh, according to the hadith of the Prophet, بخير, my ummah is still you know, in, a, in a good shape as long as they break their fast as soon as uh, they hear al adhan. Uh, the other word, al suhoor, al suhoor is the pre dawn meal is you know anything we eat let's call it like a very early breakfast a very early breakfast before al-fajr now as it is sunnah to break our fast as soon as the sun sets it is sunnah to delay a suhoor as much as possible close to close to al-fajr okay but we have to be very careful not to keep eating until we hear the adhan and we are still, you know, food in our mouth. We have to make sure to stop eating before the beginning of an adhan. If you are eating suhoor and you, and you hear adhan, don't continue eating. Just get that bite out of your mouth, wash your mouth and stop eating. Okay? And stop eating. Now uh, you might tell me, oh, I, where I can hear the adhan. If you don't have an alarm at, at home that you know, has an adhan or you are in, uh, you are not in the masjid, then you have to set your alarm. You know that Fajr starts at 4.55, then make sure to stop, you know, your suhoor before 4.55. That's why in many uh, uh, Muslim majority countries, when they, uh, you know, on TV, they announce the time of imsak, iftar, uh, uh, iftar and the time of imsak. They always have the time of imsak, which means start fasting, ending the suhoor like 10, 15 minutes before Adhan al-Fajr. You see? Just because they want people to be on the safe side. Because once you start telling the mass of the people that, oh yeah, you can keep eating until, until Fajr, they will, you know, go forward. So that's why they, they, uh, they try to convince people to stop eating like 5 to 10, up to 15 minutes before, before Al-Fajr. Some of the virtues of fasting. Um, the Prophet ﷺ said, As-siyamu jannah As-siyam, fasting 
is a shield, is a protection. It protects us from hellfire. It protects us from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As-siyamu junna, it's a shield and protection from hellfire. As-siyamu wal-Qur'an yashfa'ani lil-abdi yawm al-qiyamah. Fasting and the Qur'an, they intercede for the servant on the day of judgment. Ya'ti al-Qur'an, ya'ti al-sawm. Fasting will come when, when we will be standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. Fasting will come and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, uh, save this person. Why? A psalm will say to Allah, Ya Allah, I deprived him or I prevented him from eating and drinking in, during the, the, the daytime in Ramadan, so accept my intercession. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept it. And the Quran will come and tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, I prevented him from sleeping at night. Your servant X used to spend his night or her night reciting me. Ya Allah, accept my intercession. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept that shafa'ah, that intercession. One day, another virtue, one day of fast will keep us away from hellfire by 70 years. 70 years of walking. Just imagine the distance that you walk during 70 years. And this is according to the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. Not even Ramadan, any day that you fast. بعد الله بينه وبين ال وبين النار سبعين خريفا أو كما قال عليه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه الصلاة والسلام. Just by fasting one day for the sake of Allah, Allah سبحانه وتعالى will take that person away from hellfire by seventy years سبعين خريفا. Fasting people enter the Jannah from the gate of Arrayan. You know the Jannah has. Several gates. One of these gates is called Arrayan, and only the fasting people, لا يدخله إلا الصائمون. Only the fasting people will enter the Jannah from this gate called Arrayan. The sins committed be between the two Ramadans are forgiven, based on the Hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. الصلوات الخمس, the five daily prayers. وَالْجُمُعَةُ إِلَى الْجُمُعَةُ From one Jumu'ah to the other Jumu'ah. وَرَمَضَانُ إِلَى رَمَضَانُ مُكَفِّرَاتٌ لِمَا بَيْنَهُنَّ إِنِ اشْتُنِبَتِ الْكَبَائِرِ All the sins that are committed between the five daily prayers are forgiven. Between Jumu'ah and Jumu'ah are forgiven. And between Ramadan and Ramadan are forgiven. That's why we always say that Ramadan is a station of the spiritual cleanliness. Spiritual purification. It's a station where we clean up ourselves. We clean the, 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 the dust of the sins that we have collected before Ramadan. And after Ramadan, we start a new page with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And obviously, uh, uh, this, this uh, great virtue, which is uh, to be forgiven. مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ Whoever fasts Ramadan faithfully with faith and expecting the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all his or her sins will be forgiven. إِذَا اشْتُنِبَتِ الْكَبَائِرِ It's not mentioned in this hadith, but in the, in the previous hadith. إِذَا اشْتُنِبَتِ الْكَبَائِرِ when, if, the, if the major sins are avoided, you know, if the major sins are avoided. When we avoid the major, the major sins, al-kaba'ir, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of the as So this is what uh, I wanted to share with you um, about uh, fasting. Um, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, help us to observe Ramadan in the in the in the best intention and the best you know uh, spirit and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to uh, do our best in Ramadan as the prophet sallallahu used to command his companions uh, fa'aru min anfusikum khayra show Allah how good you are 
how devout you are, how committed you are. You know, don't show people. Show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because, you know, when you, when you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are not doing it for the people. You are not trying to impress the people. But do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how devout you are. How, you know, good you are, inshallah. Jazakumullahu khayran, barakallahu feekum, hafidhakumullah. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ameen, ya Rabbi. La ilaha illa.